What's up guys, in this video I want to talk a bit about a few techniques you can start implementing right now to significantly increase your visual design skills in 3D. Now this is something that doesn't take you a lot of time and certainly doesn't require any sort of crazy experience, but the more you do this, the more you'll kind of begin to intuitively feel shapes is the best way I can really put it. So there's two different types of design, obviously. A lot of people will design for a certain form and aesthetic, and a lot of people might design for a certain function, and also hybrids of both, right? Now you'll see in like a lot of video games, like the new Halo, for example, you see a lot of these abstract sci-fi looking shapes that don't have any particular function. So this is where it kind of comes into play for this video. What I like to do is design and just play with shapes that look cool, but don't necessarily have any sort of particular function. What this is going to do is allow you to focus solely on how to make things look cool, how to play with shapes and build on top of shapes that already exist. And this is going to heavily increase your overall competency with uh, visual design and 3D in general. So I'd try to do this, you know, three to four days a week, trying to convince you to do it seven days a week when we're all busy is just unrealistic. But if you can sit down for three to four days a week and just spend one hour a day playing with shapes and just playing with different, you know, things in Blender, kind of like what you see here, you're going to see a significant increase in not only your visual design skills, but also your modeling skills in general, since you're using the tools a lot more frequently. So the thing I'm time lapsing right now is just like a random shape. And you're already going to see, like I made a few mistakes here, deleted a few shapes in other areas as well. But overall, I'm seeing a pretty cool looking shape come together the more I practice with things and the more I manipulate the shapes and build on top of it. Now there's no way I can possibly explain all the different elements of visual design um, in you know one single video. We do have a uh, free PDF you can grab on our website if you haven't picked that up yet. It shows you my five favorite design principles. You can pick that up for free. And we also have a course on visual design if you want to pick that up. But the main gist of this video is to talk about how you can actually implement these types of things and just begin to see an improvement. And what I've noticed is that if you spend a good three to four days a week and you stick with that schedule, set aside 30 minutes to an hour, ideally an hour, because 30 minutes is usually not enough for me, and just start playing with shapes. And you're going to see in just a few weeks, probably about a month, you're going to see a significant increase in your first design versus your design on day 30. Trust me. The reason this happens is because I think you're training your brain to slowly begin to see shapes, you know, play with each other, echo off each other, and it just kind of makes your brain see things in a different way. Um, when I design shapes, I see a lot of people say, you know, how do you get these cool looking shapes? When I make shapes, they look just awful. And it's not that you don't have the modeling skill set, it's that you don't have the intuition needed to see shapes in a way that look visually appealing. And a lot of people like to give excuses like, oh, I'm not good enough at 3D, or I'm not artsy enough, or this and that. I thought I was the same way. Um, but if you do it long enough, just like anything, you're going to get there. Um, some people will learn slower, and some people will learn quicker. Whatever side you're on, you just got to put in the work. And really... It comes down to just training a skill. It's like riding a bike or driving a car. You don't know how to, you know, ease onto the brakes or to merge onto highways and things like that on day one, but it's a skill that can be developed over time. And the reason I know this is because every single person I've trained has literally seen an improvement and has been improving from the works they've shown me. I haven't seen one single person who's done this and has not improved in some way. So now that I've kind of talked a bit about how you can start practicing and just improving your skills, just three to four days a week, put aside one hour and just play with shapes and blender. And if you don't yet know the modeling tools, I of course have tons of videos on my channel for hard surface modeling. You can take a look through those, but most of you have some decent skills in blender and can easily just start doing this today even. So now that we've covered that, I want to cover a bit about what you should be looking for in your shapes and in your designs because it's not as obvious until you kind of begin to feel shapes. That's kind of the best way I can put it. 
So this shape I'm designing right here, like I said, it's just meant to look cool. It doesn't have any particular function. It might be some random asset you see sitting in like a Halo or a Mass Effect game, right? Just some cool looking shape. But you're going to see the reason it looks visually appealing is because of the way I tend to approach things. I have a lot of details concentrated at the bottom, which brings an element of importance to that piece. You're going to see the upper area is pretty empty, and the bottom area has, you know, a decent amount of details there. Also, notice how different shapes are being echoed. You'll see that I tend to work a lot with chamfers, so I like these 45 degree elements. They look really good. And you're going to see if I hop into side view here soon, on the side of it, on the top, we have a really large... 45 degree angle and on the bottom the bottom left we have a much shallower a much shorter 45 degree angle and the reason i did that is because if you keep things super even it tends to throw off the nice aesthetic feel it has so what i tend to do is if i make a 45 degree angle on the top of a shape I want to make the angle on the bottom maybe like a third of that size and that tends to bring in a lot more visual appeal compared to if I had a chamfer of the same length. It just looks too even and the more you do this, the more you don't even have to think about it, you just kind of automatically do it and that's the beauty of doing these exercises is you'll just begin to develop it and feel it and you'll notice you're doing things without even thinking about it now because you just kind of begin to see how shapes interact with each other. On top of that, you're going to notice I'm not using a lot of complicated tools, right? I'm using hard ops and box cutter, of course. It's the quickest way to design these shapes, but really all I'm doing is I'm just playing on the geometry that already exists. I make a base shape, and then I look at that base shape, and I think to myself, how can I build on top of this and use the elements that already exist to make it even more interesting? You're going to see... All I'm doing is just adding in little wedges, little angles here and there, slices, cuts, some insets, um, all very basic commands. And that's the beauty of this is complicated shapes aren't really complicated when you break it down into smaller elements. What you do is you start at a primary base form, just a really simple base shape, and then you build on top of that over and over and over again. I'm going to actually throw on a picture here of one of Ryu's bots that he designed maybe like, I don't know, two years ago or something. And you're going to kind of see the progression of the stages of this uh, specific model, right? It starts as a very basic block out, and then the stages in between are just him building on top of the shapes that already exist until you have something that seems complex. But when you look at it from, you know, a broad standpoint, it's really quite a simple model. And that's really why you need to practice at least a couple days a week for a couple hours. That's why I say the easiest is to set aside three to four days a week, put aside an hour each day, right? And just work on shapes, play with shapes, do something that you find enjoyable. If you like doing sub D modeling, focus in on sub D. If you like doing sculpting, focus in on sculpting. And if you like hard surface like I do, focus in on hard surface modeling specifically. Find the area that fits you and interests you the most. Another thing I want to mention is that you're not going to automatically see things like right up front. You're going to see during this time lapse, I have played with shapes and deleted a lot of them. I've added in shapes just to see how it looked hated it and then removed it. You're going to see I keep undoing things, I keep adding things, and I just keep playing with what I have. And sometimes I like it and sometimes I don't. And what I've found, you know, I'm still learning too. Everyone's constantly improving, which is the best thing about Blender. But, you know, the more I add things and play with things, what's happening is it's removing the potential for error in the future because I'm just playing with shapes that I know aren't going to work. And that is subconsciously going to program me to not make the same mistakes um, in the future. So don't view pieces you scrap or throw away as a failure because honestly, you've probably gotten a lot from that that you don't even notice. I make so many different shapes and designs before I finally settle on one. So if you look at my portfolio, most of those pieces, I probably went through five to 10 different iterations just to kind of figure out what type of shape I like the most. But you only see people's best version of themselves on, you know, ArtStation or on Instagram, people only show their best life, the best version of themselves. Um, whereas no one's going to really show all the boring and the, you know, weak stuff that happens in between. 
So you're going to obviously scrap shapes and you're going to have shapes you don't like, but it is a constant room for improvement, which is the best part. So I could really keep discussing this for hours. This is a topic I'm very passionate about and obviously a topic that I want everyone to focus in on because it's going to lead to the most improvement here. Um, the only possible way to improve is to put in the work, put in the hours, and put in the practice because if you don't, um, you're going to stay stuck at the same position you're in. You absolutely have to put in the time, otherwise it, it, it's not instant, right? So put in the time, practice, and just keep playing with shapes. Don't overcomplicate it. That's the whole point of this video. I want you guys to focus on the cool visual looks and just have fun, right? No one has fun when they're focusing on like all the different nuts and bolts you have to put it in a certain way to make things work. It's not fun, right? Focus on stuff that looks cool. Build your visual design library and then expand from there. That's what I think is the best way to go about approaching your modeling skills and also your design skills. And please don't get caught up in the whole topology debate. It really doesn't matter. I see this way too much and it really kills people's creativity because they think that a certain workflow or um, you know modeling technique they're using is incorrect or that there's a certain way it should be done. It's not true. It depends what you're trying to do. And I'll give you a good example here. A lot of new artists come into the Blender community and, you know, they watch a lot of, or maybe they're in university or whatever, and they're preached this whole, you know, only model with quads and sub D or whatever, which in some cases, that's a fantastic workflow. I still use it all the time. The issue is this is pushed so hard that it absolutely kills any creative freedom that otherwise really good artists would have because now they're focusing so much on a workflow that is not only in some cases inefficient but also just illogical and I'll give you a good example here. I was talking to a friend of mine who's studying game design in university and he was making a concept piece just for a portfolio cool looking render pretty cool piece and he showed his professor and his professor gave him an F on the project because he had n-gons in his model for a concept piece. And when he had told me this, it just absolutely baffles me at like what some people are teaching nowadays. Because in one side, yes, you know, a n-gon based topology can be an issue if you're going through a certain pipeline. But on the other end, if you're just playing with shapes and going for a cool concept piece and you know how to handle the topology well, it literally doesn't matter. You can break every single rule and still be an absolute professional in that field. And I just see too many people get caught up in this whole topology debate instead of just, you know, chilling and having fun and just making cool stuff. So please, I am begging you, find a workflow that works for you. Maybe it's a Boolean-based workflow like I'm doing here. Maybe it's a sculpting or sub-D-based workflow for something else. Just find a workflow that suits you and stick with it. Don't follow all the commands that people give out to you like, oh, you can only go this route or you can only go that route. It really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. The point I'm trying to make here is just be creative, have fun, expand your visual mind and just make yourself a better artist. That's the, that's the whole point, right? And you're going to notice that as you do this, as you practice more um, and as you put in the work, you're just going to see a significant improvement in all the models you make, all the shapes, just all sorts of stuff. And you're going to begin to love 3D in a completely different way. It's even better. The best part is when you get good enough to the point where people start reaching out to you for projects and jobs and things like that. Because um, back in the day, I was always trying to be the one to prove myself. But once you build up enough of a portfolio, people actually will come to you because they like your stuff enough. And that is just really where the biggest reward comes from, where you've gotten to a point where people really appreciate your work and also want to pay you for it. And you'll also develop your own style along the way. Don't worry too much about that. That just kind of comes with practice. You just kind of have your own visual style that just tends to develop on its own. So I don't know if I have another five minutes of commentary here. That's how long this clip was. I'm probably just going to cut the clip here. But I really hope this video provided you a bit of value, a bit of inspiration, gave you some ideas. And um, yeah, like I said, have fun with it. Spend a couple days a week. Put aside an hour. Just play with shapes, watch some tutorial videos, have a good time, and I think you're going to really begin to enjoy 3D in a completely different way. 
If you'd like some additional resources on hard surface modeling, which is what I focus on specifically, you can head over to our website, blenderbros.com. We have free guides, we have premium courses, and just all sorts of stuff that's going to really help you during your hard surface modeling journey. So check that out. I think there's a lot of stuff you guys can benefit from. And also, check out the other videos on my channel because I have tons of tutorials, especially if you're new to the whole hard surface modeling stuff. They should get you up to speed very quickly. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it and have a lot of fun. If you make any cool looking shapes, feel free to send them over to me on, uh, on Instagram or whatever works for you. You can email them too. And I'd love to see what you come up with. So thanks a bunch and I'll see you in the next video.